Hello, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Holly Shield, welcoming you all to another edition of Calkine TV's Executive Corner Expert Talks. Today, we're exploring one company that's doing some fascinating work in creating custom robotic systems to help businesses become more effective, cost efficient, and innovative. Remix Robotics develops custom robotic solutions that help clients in reducing costs, increasing throughput, and gaining new capabilities. And joining us today to take it through it all is Jack Pearson, the founder and director. Welcome to the show, Jack. It's great to have you with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on. First of all, could you maybe shed some light for us on your end-to-end -end solutions? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you said, so we work in robotics and automation. I think um, where we stand out is that we work across uh, industries. We've worked with companies in manufacturing, logistics, agriculture, even entertainment. What ties our clients together is that they have a challenge which can't be solved by a standard solution. So we come in and we analyze it from first principles and you know find the best solution for them. But I guess a concrete example, um, one of our most recent projects um, was for an EU aerospace parts manufacturer. And we essentially, um, they came to us with a challenge of poor utilization and we developed a customer loading system, custom pending system that allow them to pr produce parts 24 seven with far fewer employees. So um, quite, a, quite an interesting project. And right. also a, a very different one. We're currently working on something for entertainment, which is gonna be on TV three times a week. That's very interesting. So it sounds like you've got like quite a, quite a diverse range of sectors and industries that you work with there. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, robotics is being, um, having an impact across industries. It's pretty much every industry is, is being touched by it at the moment. I can imagine. And in your opinion, why has that demand shot up recently? I think that there are a lot of different factors. Um, so I can speak very clearly from the EU perspective. Um, there's some push factors. So COVID has really increased um, the transition from Far East production. Logistic costs, the challenges um, have really, you know, wanted people, increased manufacturers need to reshore production. Um, on top of that, that challenge is coupled with local skill shortages. So to reshore, they need to find workers, but it's actually very difficult at the moment. Um, in the EU, uh, when the UK, things like Brexit have kind of really increased that challenge. But, but luckily, you know, robotics are being seen as more of a solution to that as the technology matures, becoming smarter, becoming easier to apply, becoming cheaper. So it's, it's really pulling customers in who may have had a, a previous reticence. So it's lots of different factors, but, you know, all, all pushing towards automation, really. Yeah, that's incredible to hear. I can't imagine uh, exactly as you just you just described it. There is a situation where all these forces are kind of sort of coming in and leading to uh, robotics, which is the the solution for a lot of these labor shortages, for example, and um, other international restrictions that we're seeing at the moment um, in terms of employment. So it's a very clear solution there. But um, you know, I can imagine it's quite difficult to uh, actually construct these uh, custom custom automated robots. Is that uh, a, t a challenge that you find? The, uh, the customization aspect of it? Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that's where we pride ourselves. You know, so we pride ourselves on, um, on essentially, you know, helping the clients throughout that process and streamlining it as much as possible. So as I said, where we stand out is in developing solutions where something standard won't work. So to do that, it's really important to, first of all, take everything from first principles and really take the time to analyze the process, understand the requirements, understand the constraints, and then not be tied to any specific technologies or solutions. So unlike some other suppliers, potentially, we don't have any products that we're selling. So what we do is we find the ideal combination of robots, cobots, automated vehicles, and custom machinery to solve that specific challenge. So I guess the key thing is not being tied into a specific solution allows us to really find the optimal solution for a specific client. I can imagine it requires quite a lot of innovation on your part too. Yeah, absolutely. So we have, you know, an internal library of, you know, past solutions, library, um, you know, technologies that we've kind of seen applied, but a big thing is our kind of cross sector specialization. So, you know, sometimes we'll find something that's worked really well in agriculture and that's actually got a big application in manufacturing. You might not have realized that if you're stuck in one, in one silent sector, but you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's an, it's an exciting time. There's kind of lots of developments that are kind of all coming together. Completely agree there. And I would say that robotics itself is uh, developing quite rapidly. Is that something you find yourself sort of trying to stay ahead of the curve on? 
Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, every day I'm speaking to new companies in the space because a big part of what we do is not just developing our own robotics, but also finding the best solutions on the market to tie into our own technologies. So I'm constantly speaking to new suppliers who've got more and more impressive technologies. Um, and it is, you know, you really have to kind of continuously, you know, um, meet with all the different people to understand how things are progressing, you know, from machine vision to soft robotics to, you know, 3D printing, everything's really uh, you know, accelerating at the moment. I think you're definitely on the money there. It is certainly accelerating at a very rapid rate, I must say as well. And, um, you know, the hardware side, also the software side of it all, we're seeing quite a lot of impressive developments as well. And especially when it comes to the e-commerce sector, that's, you know, had a massive boom, as I'm sure you're quite, quite aware of there. And I'd love to know what the role of automation um, is in the e-commerce sector that's booming at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we've done a few projects in e-commerce and e-commerce has really been, I think, one of the biggest adopters of automation. I think um, picking, packing, transporting, these are really bread and butter automation solutions. So companies like Amazon and the UK's Akada have really been innovative in the space and they've really moved towards full automation. So really targeting every single step. So ensuring that you can you know, select, transport, package a product allowing um, allowing customers to get their products you know faster um, and much more in a much more streamlined manner which to be honest I think again COVID has played a big part in that when it wasn't safe to have you know employees pack, you know in, in tight working spaces together um, the logistics industry might have struggled to, to you know meet the demands of modern e-commerce but by working with automation and being supported by these technologies has really allowed business to carry on through the earlier stages of the pandemic. So I think that's really accelerated adoption. Completely agree there. And do you see that demand increasing at all over the coming years as people do, I suppose, become more accustomed to, uh, to the uh, quick, quick automation process? Do you, do you mean specifically in e-commerce or across, across in industries? In e-commerce, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, there's, there's probably going to be a change of, of model potentially. Um, I see companies like Ocado um, starting to fulfill orders. So as more and more companies start selling primarily through the internet, rather than developing all of their technologies in-house, they might start to use these third-party providers um, to outsource some of these, uh, you know, quite complicated developments. Right. That'll be certainly interesting to see as well, how that does, does develop and uh, I suppose put a spanner in the works, but uh, I suppose that makes for that makes your work interesting. Well, I mean, we so we help we we work with all the different clients. So it's you know from our perspective, as long as there's a trend towards robotics, it doesn't matter exactly who's applying it. It's just good to see that it's being adopted. All right, I think that's a definitely good way to look at it there. And uh, you know, one thing I'd love to know as well is what we can look forward to seeing from Remix Robotics in 2022. Yeah, absolutely. So there's there's a there's a real trend um, towards democratization. Up, you know, for the last decade or so, robotics was seen as mainly a technology for you know very large multinational companies with huge volumes that could that could really afford that large capex that comes in with big automation robotics. But that's something that we're definitely trying to work towards reducing. Um, so over the next year, we're going to be working on um, developing some internal technologies that allow us to serve SMEs and smaller clients who maybe don't have those millions of units or tens of millions of units, but can still see the benefits of, uh, of automation. So that's kind of a, an internal project that we're working on. But of course, we're still continuing on developing solutions for our clients. As I said, we've got this really exciting um, project for TV at the moment and a few other kind of uh, interesting manufacturing ones. But, you know, we're still we're, we're growing. So we'll be taking on more projects as well. It's great to hear and uh, it'd be really interesting to see what you can do for these uh, SMEs and um, how you can assist them with uh, robotics, which is something that I'm sure will revolutionize their, uh, their business practices. Yeah, it's, you know, as I said, it's the democratization. It's allowing them to have access to the same technologies that, you know, the huge conglomerates have, allowing them to become more competitive and, you know, continue to, to, to thrive in the, in, the, in the modern industry. That will be great to see. And uh, you're obviously doing some very terrific and important work there in the space. So we'll definitely keep an eye on everything that uh, Remix Robotics has for the upcoming year and beyond. But so uh, with that said, it's been really great to uh, hear from you today, Jack. Thanks very much for joining us on Executive Corner Expert Talks. Thank you, Holly. Pleasure to have you on.
Thanks for your time as well, viewers. If you've just joined us, that was Jack Pearson, the founder and director of Remix Robotics, doing some incredible work in the space, so keep an eye out. And as we say here, stay prized and invest wise with Calcine.